From on top of the snowy mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world, this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters after a great weekend in San Francisco at UFOCon 2020. We welcome you to tonight's show, including Kingdom of Nye Radio and Revolution Radio. If you want to take a listen to our archives, they are free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, do a little shopping at the SOR vault, grab a great book from We Read the Night, join the space travelers for five bucks a month, and Captain Shirk has you all up to date on the SOR Newswire. Tonight's show is brought to you by Chive Charities. Help make the world 10% happier by donating to Chive Charities today. You can find them on our website. The final Monday of every month, we go to the man, the myth, and the cryptid hunting legend. Butch Witkowski's Strange Days is back where the former police officer takes his investigative techniques into the field of the paranormal. For the last decade or so, Butch has been the head of UFO Cop. The website is UFOCop.com, based out of Pennsylvania. If it's weird, if it's strange, if it shouldn't exist, Butch is looking into it. Dogman, bipedal canines, UFOs, Mothman, aliens, paranormal. And he even tries to hunt down the elusive ex-mother-in-law. Then at the bottom of hour number three, I will bring you the SOR Newswire brought to you by Paranoia Magazine. Mr. Butch Wachowski, how you doing tonight, my friend? <laughs> I'm going to stop laughing. <laughs> That's some intro. Uh, I'm, I'm fine, sir. I'm fine. How are you? I am dead tired today, my friend. I hate to say that on the air, but I am absolutely exhausted. You know, I I got to do that. Well, you know what? It was a great conference. I met some fantastic people, fantastic people. And, you know, the one thing I love about Laurie and Fenton's conference is, is it's never the same people. I mean, Butch, you know, you've been to enough of these where it's the same people, conference after conference after conference after conference. Not with Lorian. She always wants to bring new people out. I got to meet some fantastic people from Kevin Day from the Nimitz incident to Chris Bledsoe, the experiencer, and, and you know, just a ton of people. There was There was Big Bad Bob who uh, is a, a fantastic scientist at a Virginia Tech. You know, I love that guy. Uh, the guys from UFO Garage Podcast, they were fantastic. And so many people, man. And, you know, I, sh- I should let our listeners know, too. So last night, I went to the airport at like 4 o'clock. And I go to get my ticket at Air Canada. And it's not their fault. But I guess, Butch, one of their planes previous to me arriving broke down so they had to cancel a flight and reroute everybody there was 200 people in front of me i stood there for two hours before i realized that i could check in online right so i checked in online go and uh, get through customs and and every or pardon me through the tsa and and uh, take my shoes off and all this kind of stuff and go through. And then I figure, you know, old Davy's a little hungry, a little hungry. So I go to one of those restaurants in the, in the, in, in the uh, airport. And, you know, usually they're pretty classy. They pretty got, uh, got pretty good food. And I had the worst salad I have ever had in my life. I can't even describe the taste of a salad. Oh yeah. Well, that cost I had to kill. Oh, about twenty bucks, twenty bucks for that. <laughs> and uh, any anyway, so I end up, uh, you know, going to my gate. Uh, you know, it was announced my flight would be at gate G three. After sitting there for about forty five minutes, realized that they changed gates to G one. Get there. My flight, which is scheduled to board at seven forty five, does not board until eight thirty fly out at 9, get to Vancouver just before midnight, go through customs, get everything looking good. I'm in the most uncomfortable seat on a plane that I have ever been. 
And then the baggage carousel breaks down. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So from the airport, my father, God love him, he picks me up at the airport, takes me back to his place where where uh, I go and I, you know, that's where I parked my vehicle, and I start to head home and, you know, having a good conversation before I get into the mountains with Everett Themer to see how his weekend went as he covered me for five days and then end up, you know, going through the mountains, come around this pass, and there are literally... 20 elk on the road and i slow right down i'm i come to a dead stop butch on the on the highway because i've never seen elk before ever they're big man they are big you don't ever want to hit one (laughs) no 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 that would hurt that would hurt so i enjoyed that I enjoyed that. I go through the mountains, and I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. See a couple of other uh, animals run across the road, small ones. I couldn't figure out what they were because they were so far away. And, uh, you know, then I start making my climb into the mountains. And once I start making my climb into the mountains, it's about 45 minutes home. Yeah, 90, 95, 100 minutes later, I finally arrive home after driving through a snowstorm complete blizzard like conditions i got home at just after 6 a.m this morning i'm tired oh i'm tired man i would think i, I just got tired listening to you <laughs> oh yeah wow oh, yeah. yeah i think i had i think i had two naps today i think i had two naps i i when i was still working uh for uh Penske corporation used to fly a lot, and one time I got in that same type of rumble out in Chicago O'Hare. And uh, plane, the flight was canceled. I forget what the problem was anymore. And then the next flight was late, and th- then the baggage wasn't switched over yet. So instead of leaving like at 5 o'clock in the afternoon uh, to our destination, uh, it turned out to be like we boarded at 1130 yeah. That sucked. Yeah, and I had a I had a fifteen hundred pub yeah, fifteen hundred a fifteen dollar hot dog. Yeah. So your your twenty dollar salad doesn't surprise me at all. No. No, not at all. And you know, I, I hate to think because it's funny when you go to an airport, Butch, and, and you see like literally two thirds of the people out in the in an airport, or maybe a third of the people who are outside just chain smoking like anything. I'm really surprised that more airports aren't like the Las Vegas airport, that they have actually smoking rooms in them for people who smoke. I realize, look, being a smoker these days is a taboo topic for a lot of people, so on and so forth. And, you know, especially the the uh, the the anti smoking people who used to smoke, but now they're against everything and, the uh, you know, tobacco. You know, I feel sorry for the smokers. I really do, because, I mean, airports with the with everything, with the TSA and everything, they're stressful now. You know, airports are stressful travel. And when you take away the ability for people who say use cigarette smoking for for um, anxiety or to calm their nerves or whatever, because it it is a, a relaxant as bad as it is for you, it, it is a relaxant. And it's amazing that they don't have these, you know. Uh-huh. Espe- especially, especially because you can't leave. You can't friggin' leave to go outside. You, you're stuck. And it doesn't matter how many hours you're there. You're stuck. Yep. I don't get it. Your life belongs to them. <laughs> yes. You're, you're very, very right. So while I've been gallivanting down in California, what have you been up to? Uh, we've been really getting crazy now. I, it's... And it's not just, it's, uh, it, it, things are happening everywhere. Uh, we got, uh, creatures, uh, up in Ontario. Uh, we got a researcher on the way over there. Uh, Bigfoot reports all over the country. And I mean all over the country. Now, I don't chase them all over the country, but I get the reports. And, 
UFOs, uh, strange things in cemeteries all of a sudden again, which was like that maybe five, six years ago, um, where we had um, a couple uh, bipedal canine reports, sightings in cemeteries, and then that kind of died off, and now we got more sightings of unknown creatures in cemeteries. Um, but that's, you know, there are a lot of Bigfoot reports over the years that they were seen in or around cemeteries. So I, I don't quite know what's going on there. Like I said, it's all coming from all over, Dave. I mean, it's just not Pennsylvania. I mean, it's everywhere from the West Coast to the uh, Southwest, uh, Northwest. I mean, it's everywhere. And um, it was just like it was like a, it was very quiet for a while there for about two weeks. Um, and then it was and like a blitz. I mean, it just they just start popping in every day. I don't do know what's going on. Well, and that's what I was going to ask you. What do you, what do you think's going on? What's causing all of this? Well, <laughs> excuse me. You know, there's been a real break in weather. You know, uh, now I don't I'm not talking about like North and South Dakota. They always get hammered and. Uh, Northern California and, you know, up your way and, uh, you know, kind of around that way. Uh, but it just seems like when the weather broke, um, like today, we were in the 60s today, it, um, it's, it, the weather turned and that's when the reports started popping in from Florida, um, even when they had the bad rainstorms and stuff down Louisiana and Georgia, uh, down in that area, North, South Carolina, even from there we were getting reports. Uh, Virginia, Northern Virginia, and uh, you know, a lot of guys were saying, "Well, it, maybe it's because the weather wasn't so bad this year." You know, there weren't a lot of hurricanes and tornadoes, uh, fires, and all that stuff. It's hard to say because uh, a couple years ago, uh, we we had a it had to be a four or five month dry spell where we didn't have anything, and there was nothing coming in. I mean, it just seemed it was quiet everywhere. And then in like a matter of a few weeks or about a month and a half, actually, all hell broke loose. And that's the way it happened now. So, I mean, I got five or six reports in, on, on my desk that I didn't even get to yet. I just finished my up goodness. the other two. The one thing that I find interesting, what you're saying is they're all spread out. They're yes. not in a, a singular location. Is that normal? Uh, no, that's really not normal. Nor uh, what would be more normal is if I'd say I'd have one or two reports here in Pennsylvania and maybe the closest one to me uh, where it would be some type of unknown creature or Bigfoot or whatever would uh, might be in the southwest or maybe on the west coast or, up, you know, in Washington, Oregon area or maybe way down south. And they would be singular reports, but we're not getting anything like it. These are all multiple reports, multiple witness, uh, and it's just not creatures. It's UFOs and strange stuff in the sky, and uh, you know weird stuff going on in uh, in and around cemeteries. Again, um, it's crazy. It's just crazy. So the people who are seeing these, how close are the encounters? Uh, the creature encounters uh, on, I would say, if I just say take six cases, I would say three of them were uh, within 100 yards. The, the uh, UFO cases uh, that are multi-witness, uh, in one case they watched, um, they watched it for, I think it was 17 minutes, 18 minutes, and it was just, you know, flying patterns in the sky and then it stopped dead disappeared came back on a few seconds later and shot straight up now i didn't get the, the guy got video of that i didn't get the video yet he's mailing it to me but I'm, I'm interested to see that one okay so when you wait for a video like that to come across your email you know because hmm. no longer no longer do you have to wait for the vhs tape to come in uh via the right, snail right. mail, and I could just imagine what it was like investigating back then with that high-tech technology that you, you guys yeah. were using. But uh, 
in regards to the video, what, what do you look for, Butch, when somebody sends you a video like that? Oh, there's a couple things you want to look for right off the get-go. Like if they say it was a starry night and, you know, you got the video and there's no stars there. Or um, you look up the date and time and location, uh, the GPS on it and stuff like that. And it says, you know, it was very cloudy. There was no, there's no way they could have seen something like that. I mean, you, you look for the obvious things that for a hoax. But um, that, that's another thing. I really haven't had this year. No, it's only February, but I usually get one a month, uh, you know, or uh, a report that you can't reach the people that gave you the report. And I've only had one or two of those since January 1. So, I mean, the stuff that we're getting are people that are, you know, they, they know what they saw. They, you know, they're ready to give you the report, the n- number of witnesses, when, where, how, what they saw, if they got cameras, pictures, whatever, uh, drawings, maps, um, which is what we really like because, you know, I'm not there, you know, in Atlanta, Georgia. But the guy sends a map with all the streets on it. You know, it's a Google overhead um, satellite shot, uh, direction to travel. I mean, the, the reports that are coming in seem to be well put together. You know, we're not, we don't have to ask a lot of questions. It's they're, they're giving us all that information without even asking. Yeah. And when you go through the reports uh, with those videos and you and you kind of look how you break it down to see if it's authentic or not, as for what is actually on the screen, what is flying around in this case, what are you looking mm-hmm. for there? Uh, usually shape. Um, a couple of the programs that we use, I can get an approximate size. Um, so... Uh, the two that we got and the one that I'm expecting are all triangles. And uh, the other one is a, uh, a rectangular shape, but he was not sure of that. He said because of the angle he was looking at. And when it turned to, to go in another direction, he said it didn't look rectangular anymore. It looked more like a tube, but that's very possible too. Hmm. We've heard a lot about these tube or cigar shaped type craft yep. about that. Yep. When you start seeing patterns, you know, because we, we've we seen the patterns of, of a couple of years ago, a lot of people were seeing the, the black triangles and, and the cigar shapes. And now discs seem to be coming back in sightings. Mm-hmm. Do you think, Butch, that it's, sic- it's secular? Okay. And, and I'm not saying it's it's alien technology at this point because, you know, we really don't know. I mean, I love to say, you know, when in doubt, aliens and so on and so forth. Right. But right. but we don't know. And yet we, we tend to see these these patterns of of everybody seeing black triangles and then it's cigar shapes and then it's, you know, balloon like uh, craft. And, and now the discs seem to be coming back. Well, the the discs really never went away. They had the, from watching reports, and I'm just going to go over the last two years, um, we didn't see disks around this area for a long time. Most of the stuff was orbs or triangles. And um, then there was a uh, report that came out of, that was Mont- Montana, and that was last summer where uh, a gentleman working in a field uh, laying pipe or something like that, if I remember right. And um, he saw a shiny object in the sky, which he thought was a plane right away. He didn't pay much attention, but he looked up again as he turned his piece of equipment around in the field, and it was an absolute saucer, and behind it and above it was another one. And um, he got a shot with his camera phone, but you know how they are. So although the it was distorted, um when I pixelized it and, you know, took the pixels apart and stuff and, and clear, cleaned it up a little bit, there were three saucers. Now, the one was bigger and the other two were a little smaller, but they could have been further away than the first one, the larger one. So that's another thing. You know, when, when the photographs that you get uh, and you have to start, you know, taking them apart and and uh, trying to define what they are and see if there's any pixelation that, would, you know, somebody trying to hoax something or something like that, um the clearer picture 
you know, you could probably clear up pretty much of it, but you don't have the exact distance where the individual saw it or took the picture from. So although, unless you have a building or something in the background, but when you're out in the open like that, you know, what, you know, he could say, well, it was a mile away. Well, it could have been 10 miles away. You know, the eyes aren't very good at focusing on, on depth perception and length distance. But it, it's kind of fun when you get those pictures because, you know, you're kind of right there. And now you're really taking it apart and looking at it. And But those three saucers, they were there. They were saucers. No doubt about it. We have about two minutes before we're going to go to break here at the bottom of the hour. How do we tell, or Butch, how do you try and, and discover whether or not a craft is of this world or of some sort of uh, human descent? Well, usually it's their aeronautics. I mean, the speed. Um, we don't have anything that'll be gone, you know, from east to west and then stop and then shoot straight up or something that will just zigzag across horizon to horizon. We don't have anything that fast. And, you know, and it's still, it's still a thing where, you know, you can't say, well, there's an alien piloting that craft. The craft could be a machine and there could be nobody on board. Um, they've been here for so long. I mean, you know, there, there's pictures back in the 1800s of these things. And it is, it's uh, not like Bigfoot, you know, everybody's been hunting for Bigfoot for what, 50 some years. We ain't found anything yet, they say, but um, the reports are there. Uh, Bipedal, same thing, the reports are there. But UFOs, there's lots of video, lots of witnesses. Uh, We had one in Pennsylvania uh, two years ago where uh, a fleet, I'm going to say a fleet because there were like seven uh, flying over a um, nuclear plant in northern Pennsylvania and northeastern Pennsylvania. And cars were outside, stopped on the highway, people outside the cars all pointing, looking, and you can see them clear as a bell. Gotta love those close encounters. Butch, when we come back from the break here at the bottom of the hour, I want to ask you about you know, the UFOs. I mean, you said you, you've you seen evidence of, of of them clustering. Well, I had a chance to talk to Kevin Day this weekend, who was the radar operator uh, during the Nimitz incident in 2004. Mm-hmm. And he believes strongly that he has PTSD over this. And I, I'm curious to get your opinion as we continue. Strange Days. With Butch Witkowski, it happens the final Monday of every month. His website, uf4cop.com. Stay tuned. More UFO talk right after this. Hey, space travelers. This is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. 
You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is watching. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Hello, everyone. This is Ryan Stacy from the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESA. We're glad to team up with Spaced Out Radio to help investigate your experiences on the SOR Sightlines Report. Together, we'll investigate the strange sightings and occurrences you've had. We're looking for answers just like you. So fill out a Sightlines Report on the Spaced Out Radio website and let's figure out what's going on together. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble f- We're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at kajons.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience has proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Visit purpleplates.com today. 
For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Welcome back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to remind you that all of our archives are free, so you can check them on out at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. You can check those on out. Wow. You're listening to the show. Butch Witkowski's Strange Days happens the final Monday of every month where we get into everything strange and weird. And Butch, welcome back to the show. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Always good to be back. I had a good opportunity to sit down a number of times with Kevin Day. And for people who do not know who Kevin Day is, he was the radar operator who literally saw all the UFOs and was tracking all all of the UFOs back in 2004 as what is now known as the USS Nimitz incident and the Tic Tac videos came out of that. Butch, you know, in talking to Kevin and seeing him, you know, it's easy to talk to somebody on on phone or, or on Skype or, or even do a video chat with them, but until you're actually with them face to face to see how this has affected them. I had a good opportunity to sit with Kevin and kind of chat about everything that went on and to see how this really, really affected him emotionally, even though he was, you know, in a in a wartime simulation, because that's why they were out there. He's the one who told the commanding officer to maybe scramble a couple of F-18s to check this on out. And that's how David Fravor got involved. Which, right. by the way, Kevin was tracking one of them, and he told he told me, and he and he said in his speech because I got to interview him uh, in front of the panel during the conference in front of the audience, which was really cool. I didn't even know I was going to be doing that, but he said that when Commander Fravor flew his F eighteen to where this alleged tic tac was, it was sitting there at about. 28,000 feet just sitting there. And the next thing they know, it drops to about 50 feet above sea level. Now, the next day after all the reports were done and the mathematics were done, guess how long it took to drop from 28,000 feet to 50 feet? Point seven four of a second. Mm-hmm. That would kill any human being, by the way. Oh, I have to turn them into a bowl of jelly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this was one of the incidents that he stated that has affected him. Like, he's thought about that every single day ever since. You don't hear much about PTSD from people who have had UFO encounters. Is this something we need to be looking at both on a humanitarian and a scientific level for experiencers? Uh, yeah, there, that, it, uh, there, there have been some over time. Um, uh, I dealt with two young fellows. Uh, well, not young. But their experience happened when they were young fellows. They uh, watched something clip the trees. Uh, on their farm, and he, she said it looked like he was in distress. It was wobbling. Uh, uh, it wasn't very big. He said maybe 50 foot in circumference uh, and, and silent except for a slight hum and um, cows in the field uh, scattered when went overhead. And they were, uh, I believe, 18 and 19 at the time. And 
and when I got to talk to them, they were in their four, late forties. And I mean, you could hear it in their voice. They were, they were nervous wreck. And they, they said, you know, they live with it every day. He said, they, both of them said the same thing. There's not a day they don't go outside. And the first thing they do is look up and look around. They expect to see another one, you know, anytime. So I think there, yeah, there could be a, a psychological, um, interference uh in your head when it comes to these things it's just i know the first one i saw i mean i was i was there with seven other people and um, i thought about that for weeks and weeks and weeks till it went away and then uh you know i was watching a tv show one time we were talking about ufos and i was off and running and been doing that for over 30 years now but um it didn't affect me um that way it more affected me in that I had to make sure that what I saw I knew I saw and that it existed you know I, I it's like I didn't believe my own eyes even though there were other people there and uh, the, the the nonchalant actions of all the folks I tried to contact that day you know uh, Department of Public Safety Highway Patrol Tucson Police the Air Force, but Davis Moffin Air Force Base, all the uh, Phoenix uh, Bay, uh, Phoenix uh, Airport, Tucson. I mean, I called everybody you think of, radio stations, TV stations, and nobody saw anything. Now that's nuts. <laughs> that's just crazy. I mean, this thing was three football fields in length. How do you not see something like that out in the open on top of a mountain? And, uh, it, it it just bothered me that nobody kind of seen it, or if they did see it, they weren't talking. And that was kind of the way it was with the the Phoenix Lights. I mean, there were a lot of witnesses to the Phoenix Lights. Everybody blew them off. I mean, nobody believed them. And uh, idiot uh, governor. But um, it was strange. Uh, headwise and I, I could see where you know a fellow like that like like day where you know he's he's directly involved in that i mean i was only looking at it he was involved in trying to catch it or trying to find out what it was and yeah i could see that ptsd i could see that easily look at look look at the people that go through paranormal experiences uh, are people that were taken abductees? They all have PTSD in one form or another. Very true. Very true. But is this something that you think that we need to be adding to the list of conditions for those who have had the ultimate experience? Oh, I think so. Yeah, why not? It's part of the experience, right? I guess you could say that. I guess you could say that. So, I mean, the more information uh, a researcher or an investigator gets, the more you could probably help folks out. A lot of people, not so much now anymore, but in the very beginning, uh, when I first started doing abductions, people were scared to death that they were going to die. I mean, I heard that from many people. They were going to die or be taken and eaten or, you know, turned into zombies. Or I mean, they all had all kinds of things going on. And, you know, some of these people were living with that stuff for years and years and years. And I often wondered how, how they even function, you know, day to day with that thought going through their head. Like they're going to be taken or they're going to be killed in their sleep or, or whatever. And, but that's just the way it is. It's, it's, uh, it, the depression gets so deep. It's crazy. I mean, it's just ludicrous. Uh, divorces, uh, people just running off, never to be heard from again for no reason whatsoever. Happens all the time. Does get a little strange. So, well, it's, it's psychological. I mean, you know, uh, you could run into a Bigfoot out in, up in your area and you'd stand there and stare at it and see what's going on. I'd see something in the sky and I'd do the same thing. You have other people that would see what we saw and they'd flip out and run away or, you know, just go off the deep end. 
Let's change topics here because I want to get to these reports that have happened out of Ontario where there's been some strange sightings and occurrences. What's happening? Um, bipedals uh, in that two, uh, two fellows in that area um, saw something uh, that they described. It wasn't a bear. It wasn't a Bigfoot. Um, so when they started giving the description, they started describing a, a bipedal. Um, we had another one. Um, that one, I'm trying to think where that was. It wasn't in Ontario. Uh, can't, I can't, I can't place the location. Um, oh, Quebec. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Butch. Uh, where uh, a guy does track, uh, uh, tracking, you know, um, uh, trapping critters in creeks and stuff like that. I don't know what he's trapping. He did say, but I don't remember. And he saw something just stroll across the field. And he described exactly the description of a bipedal canine. Are these reports normal for the Ontario, Quebec area? No. And the guy that saw the one in the Quebec area, he reported to the uh, RCMP, and they just kind of laughed at him. Basically told him if he sees it again to give him a call. <laughs> Were there any tracks, or did he just get the hell out of Dodge? No, oh, no, he, he, he took off. He probably beat Jesse Owens. I'll bet there was smoke coming off his sneakers. He left his traps, and he's been not been back since. He said, "I'll never go back there." And Talk it's funny the because he's actually he's actually a New Yorker that moved up there. He married really? a girl from Quebec, and uh, he's actually from New York because he didn't have an accent. I thought, "What's this all about?" You know, everybody in Quebec has an accent. And yes, uh, a couple times I've been there. I mean. <laughs> I mean, nice people, a lot of fun, but um, you know, I, said, I, said, I, said, I said, were you born and raised in Quebec? And he went like, uh, no, <laughs> Rochester, New York. <laughs> I said, okay. So you talked but, to the gentleman. Look, huh? You talked to the gentleman who had this encounter. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, he got a hold of me on the website, sent me an email through the website, and I called him. We talked for about 20 minutes. He was rattled, but, you know, he says, you know, your eyes can play tricks on you and this, that, and the other thing. I said, well, not like that. I mean, I said, you know the difference between a bear and a wolf, right? He went like, yeah. I said, so, uh, you know, it wasn't a, a moose. It wasn't an elk. It wasn't a, it wasn't a wolf. You say it was bipedal. It was on two legs. It had arms. He went, yeah. I said, do you see any paws? No. He said, it looked like it had hands. And I said, okay. You saw what you saw. And um, now there were, uh, I just picked it up this morning. Um, and I didn't get to read a whole lot about it, but there was a, a bipedal seen out in the Four Corners region, uh, Colorado, I believe, of a bipedal. Same description as what we have here. Goodness. But, now, you know, for people who don't know, when you say bipedal, I, I know there in the past you've talked about the idea that there is a difference between these bipedal canines and dogman specifically. Right. Yes. Are we yes. looking? Uh, are, how do we know we're not getting confused between the two here? The size. Uh, uh, the okay. Uh, the difference. Uh, we'll go with dogman first. Dogman uh, shorter, even if standing on its hind legs only about four foot tall, maybe five. Long floppy ears, most cases, uh, dog-like face, multicolored, uh, tails, long uh, fluffy tails. Um, they're on, always seen on all fours. A couple times they were seen standing up, but they have paws, they don't have hands. Bipedal canine, uh, eight to 10 foot tall, large wolf head, pointed ears, um, massive chest, uh, long arms with hands, very muscular, very thin-waisted, no tail, 
uh, massive thighs, legs, and then, you know, this, from the shins down, it would be hawk legs like a dog, and hands, no paws. And always glowing yellow eyes, always. A lot of people who have had these close encounters with these creatures always tend to give these stories, and I don't know how real they are. You know, I would honestly say that I want to believe they are real. And that is, you know, some sort of telepathic communication. Basically, Mm -hmm. if people are armed, that it's not a good idea to raise that weapon. It's almost like it, it knows that there's a weapon yeah. around or something along those lines. Explain we've had that, that to we've us. Had that, we've had that happen in every case where we had somebody had a weapon. And, you know, you say, well, you know, like the one guy said, he said, I had it in my sights. It was in my scope. He said, all I had to do is pull the trigger. I said, why didn't you pull the trigger? He said, something told me don't do it. Or it's going to get really bad really quick. Then we had a group of guys go out, same thing. They all had the same thing happen at the same time. They got so scared, they backed out with their guns facing where they were headed. So with this gentleman in Quebec, this trapper who saw this creature, Mm -hmm. did he receive any message? Mm, Nope. Mm -mm. Well, and, and he wasn't armed either. He was trapping he didn't have he didn't have a he didn't have a sidearm. Because I asked him, I said, Do you have a weapon? And he went, No, just my knife. And cutters, you know, to cut the cables and stuff for what he was hunting. That was it. Right. So and he the didn't, general... he didn't go ahead. He didn't stick around long. <laughs> the gentleman in Ontario, tell us more about that situation. What happened there? Um we didn't get the whole story yet back because the investigator is just up there now. And um, it was uh, two gentlemen uh, were hunting. And I um, saw the thing run through the brush right in front of them. We've had these things run out in traffic. What? Uh, I have a, I have a case right now down in Doylestown. The lady's going to send me the exact coordinates so we can go down and take a look. And she said they were driving home, her and her boyfriend, and it ran out one side of the highway, ran across the other side of the highway, and he said jumped a six-foot wall with one bound. That quick. Wow. One bound, six-foot wall. And she sent me a picture of the wall. And it's an old stone wall because it's in an older part of the Doylestown area near Philadelphia. And uh, she said she didn't believe what she saw. And that was it. Never saw anything like it again. Her boyfriend, he got rattled. But uh, she do not go up that way anymore. But I told her, I said, we, well, you know, we would come down. We'd like to really look around a little bit. And she said, well, I'll meet you at the hotel down the street. There's a bed and breakfast. And she said, uh, take it up there. But then, you know, depending on where you live in this part of the, in this, in the United States, you know, first thing that comes up are skinwalkers. And our bipedal could very well be a skinwalker. We don't know. I mean, it's never seen outside of heavily forested areas or game lands or state parks or federal parks. It's always stayed within the loop. Um, we have reports from way back and uh, describing the same type of animal, creature, whatever you want to call it. And it's, um, it's there, you know. Um, You know, we just don't know what they are. But, you know, back in 1768, you know, we found a report in a newspaper where one was uh, killing the guy's goats, goats or sheep. I always get that mixed up. And he took a shot at it, and he went into town and reported it to the local constable. 
and they went out hunting it, and he gave the description. The description is right there, and he describes the same thing as I just described it to you. And Pennsylvania back in those days was all Indians. I mean, we had Indians everywhere. Very few white people lived here. And we have a lot of burial mounds. There were a lot of battlefields. And um, they say, uh, you know, when I talk to Cherokee and I talk to uh, some Arapaho and uh, different uh, Navajo tribes uh, to get a little bit more information back in the early stages of when I was looking into these things, you know, they said they could be guardians. They could be lost warriors. Most likely they're guardians. You know, they're guarding those, those graves. And I went like, oh, okay. And then they say, well, it doesn't always have to show up the way you're describing it. It could show up as anything. It could be a deer. It could be a dog. It could be a squirrel. They change when they want to. And, you know, Indian lore uh, goes back. The indigenous take these stories back for hundreds of years. And they're describing pretty much the same thing that, you know, we, we have or, you know, we've had reports on. So it's, uh, I mean, it's just bizarre. Um, you know, it's not like UFOs. You see something in the sky and, you know, the way it's acting, what it's doing or the color or the shape or the size or how speed how speedy it goes, you know, across the sky or whatever. You can understand that. I mean, you know, you can put two and two together and come up with four and it's a UFO. But these things here, I mean, I mean, they're seen everywhere. Um, some are taller, some are smaller, but they're not the dog man type description. They're never seen on all four. I never had one seen on all fours, not one report like that. Not one with a big fluffy tail or multicolored coats. They're either dark brown, real dark brown, or black. And the dog men always have glowing red eyes, people say. But if I take a picture of my dachshund while he's sleeping and I wake him up real quick and take a snapshot with a flash, he'll have glowing red eyes too. You have a doc you have a dachshund dog man right there, man. Yes, sir. Just keep keep him out of the full moon. Uh, yeah, I try to. We have about we have about forty five seconds here before we got to go to break at the top of the hour. Butch Witkowski is our guest tonight. Butch, you know I'm curious about these Canadian sightings here. Now with the hunters in Ontario and the trapper in Quebec, are these hot spots for the bipedal canines? Give you about thirty seconds to answer that. Absolutely no. We have no reports from that area ever, uh, or anything that I could find in background research in any of those areas of anything. Uh, I, I did find one Bigfoot report outside of Ontario in a small town that I can't even pronounce. Uh, but that was uh, back in the late 50s, like 1957-58. That's the only report I found. I found no other reports like that. Now, going your way, that's a different story. Well, let's get into that when we come back, shall we? Okay. We shall. Let's make sure. All right, Butch Witkowski, Strange Days happens the final Monday of every month. Butch's next appearance will be on March 30th. We're going to stay with the canines, the monsters, the cryptids on Strange Days with Butch Witkowski right here on Spaced Out Radio. Hi there, this is Geraldina Roscoe from San Francisco's Bay Area Meditation. I invite you to join me the first Tuesday of every month with Dave Scott for Spaced Out Radio's The Spiritual You. In this fast-paced world we live in, it's time for you to take some time for you. We'll cover every possible subject from powerful meditation to healing techniques to your own intuition and spirituality. So come join us for The Spiritual You. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. 
Hi, this is Amber Beckrude, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we store all of the SOR show archives for free. And as an added bonus, every two weeks, I'm posting brand new content on Cryptid Tales, where I will get into some of the spookier legends and folklore from around the world and tell the stories that go with them. Find us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio and check out Cryptid Tales today. Drop a comment and let me know what you want to hear. See you there. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do? What to do? Why not get Bumblefoot? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning bumble. Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spicing up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. Are you an experiencer of something strange that can't be explained? Do you want help finding out what's going on? I'm Ryan Stacy, head of the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESSA. We've teamed up with Spaced Out Radio to investigate cases filled out in the SOR Sightlines Report. We are independent and there's no cost to what we do. All we need is your experience. Let's find out what's happening together on the SOR Sightlines Report. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. A little bit of science, a little bit of skepticism. Add a dash of snark and you have the makings of Spaced Out Sundays with me, Everett Thiele. Together we will look into the reality of the paranormal with an open eye and rational thought. Oh, did I mention there'll be plenty of woo as well? Your time spent with Spaced Out Sundays will make the night even better. The chat rooms are open, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. 
Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spaceoutradio.com. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up? All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the story you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. Hello, space travelers, it's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Hour number two of Spaced Out Radio is underway tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Appreciate each and every one of you tuning us on in. We say hello to everyone listening in on KZFX 93.7 FM in Ridgecrest, California. KDNF AM 1560 in Dangerfield, Texas. KDUN AM 1030 in Reedsport, Oregon. WQEE 99.1 FM in Noonan, Georgia. And UPRN 107.7 FM in New Orleans. On the digital side, we're proud to broadcast on Kingdom of Nye Radio and Revolution Radio. Remember, you can check out all of our archives for free at YouTube dot com forward slash spaced out radio do old davy the favor hit that subscribe button the desert clam has set the password for tonight in the sor space travelers club dingonic dingonic is your password use it wisely space travelers as the clam sets the password each and every night right here on spaced out radio our website is spaced out radio.com where we have a plethora of features for you rock out to bumblefoot do a little shopping at the sor vault grab a great book from we read the night join the space travelers for five bucks a month and also captain shirk has you all up to date on the sor newswire we bring in Butch Witkowski as we do the final Monday of every month. Butch's website, UFORCOP.com. If you want to check it on out as we talk strange days. And right before the break, we were talking about some incidents that were happening in Ontario and Quebec with bipedal canines. Butch, I want to continue along this bipedal canine uh, route here because you say the sightings are up And these reports are all similar, and they're happening from areas that don't normally get these type of reports. That's correct, yes. Um, For the longest time, uh, we've seen them only in uh, Pennsylvania, western Pennsylvania, eastern Ohio, western Ohio, uh, West Virginia, and basically that was it. And then it just started getting... Uh, more. Uh, there was a couple up in New York. There were a couple down in Virginia, um, uh, Louisiana, um, and then the, the Southwest, and then of course you know the West Coast, uh, more up in the uh, Washington, Oregon areas. Uh, but the descriptions are the same, you know. So these whatever they are, shapeshifters, bipedal canines. Uh, who knows? We just don't know what they are. But they show no fear. I mean, they they confront they they've confronted people, you know, within a few feet. They they don't move. They don't take their eyes off you either. So um, we've had uh, one get a little nasty with a group of people. Um, we haven't had any attacks or anything like that that we could find. Um, but as not really that I'd want to run into one in the woods. I don't mind getting a photograph of one or a thermal image of one, but <laughs> I'm certainly not going to walk up and 
shake hands. Have you been able to predict at all when these sightings are going to happen or where they're going to occur? No. Mm -mm. Um, Our lichen loop, uh, which you can see on the website, uh, we're just punching up. It'll come up on Google. Uh, We never had anything stray out of that area uh, in Pennsylvania. Um, So uh, are we dealing with the same one or are there more than one? We don't know. Only because the descriptions are all alike. Uh, uh, we've had people claim that, you know, they saw a werewolf and, you know, they, you know I think, you know, they're watching too much TV because they start describing what kind of pants he was wearing, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm going, mm hmm. But uh, it's. It's weird. It's just, uh, you know, up until four years ago, I never heard anything like this. And when I got that first report, I don't even know why I got it. Um, And uh, it just took off from there. Uh, We only ever had one hoax. Uh, We went to that scene, and it was pretty obvious it was a hoax. But only one out of uh, 60 reports. So... So with that, what do you think this creature is? Do you think it's a creature that is from here that is, you know, I mean, there's there's a big piece of of the research puzzle out there that believes that things like Bigfoot are natural creatures. Do you think this is alien? Do you think this is something supernatural? What's your best guess? My best guess would be supernatural. We've... uh... On all these, on every report, we've looked for reports like if we have a report of a bipedal in a certain area, the next, well, not next, but one of the first things we do is we look to see if there's any UFO sightings in that area or any bright lights in the sky or anything like that. Um, Unlike Bigfoot reports where people are seeing a flash of light and then a Bigfoot appears or there's a flash of light in the woods and it disappears. We haven't had anything like that. We did have one uh, in Blair County, uh, Pennsylvania, where the gentleman and his uh, rider coming home from work saw one tearing up a roadkill along the side of the road. And when it stood up, he said it looked like it had a silver aura around it. But he said it could have been that he turned on his high beam and he was actually, it was an outline of the fur. Do you know what I mean? Like the fur was shiny. Right. But uh, nothing, we've really had nothing that's been out of the ordinary. I mean, they're seen, uh, they follow people, they come out on people, they, uh, you know, they're seen crossing roads, uh, running through trails. I mean, they're seen in all kind of locations in these state parks and federal parks, game lands especially, but. I mean, we don't have anything, uh, reports like um, they're in a neighborhood, you know, walking down a, down a street in a neighborhood or anything like that. The locations they're in are, you know, really in the deep, dark woods. But then again, you know, Bigfoot's the same phenomenon. I mean, you don't see them at the local 7-Eleven. Depends where you are. That's true. Now, British Columbia, that's a whole other story, brother. You got where that you way. live. Where you live, you can make you could you can make a career out of just studying British Columbia reports on Bigfoot. Oh, absolutely, you could. Same as Washington and Oregon as well, and Northern California. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, with but these look, creatures, you, at, you know, go ahead. When go you ahead, look at that up. area, though. Well, you know, uh, when you look at that area uh, up where you are and, you know, the type of area, the, the woods and, you know, all the, uh, the landscape you have up there, that's what our national parks look like down here, our state parks, and our game parks. There's nobody lives there. I mean, they have, you know, there might be a campground close by or on the property, but that's it. Uh, 
and then you just, like I said, just deep, dark woods. And when I say deep and dark, it's, that's no, I mean, you could be, like we were driving from one location to another one time, and the guy was driving with me, says, he says, look over there to your left. And I looked, and he says, what do you see? And I said, woods. He said, no, what do you see past the woods? And I then I really looked. It was a bright, sunny day, and it was black as coal. You couldn't see anything. You could have had anything stand there watching you. Never would have seen it. And then there's guys that, uh, you know, some Bigfoot hunters that uh, really got nailed uh, uh, where they thought they uh, were dealing with a Bigfoot, but when they actually got a glimpse of the of the animal, it didn't look anything like a Bigfoot. It looked more like a canine. Hmm. Interesting. Do you believe this creature is migratory with other animals for feeding purposes, or do you think it's just trying to expand its own territory? I think it just watches its own territory. Uh, like I said, our lichen loop, we've never had any reports outside of it. Uh, it's 180, uh, 180 miles long, um, 150 miles long, 80 miles wide. It's never been outside there. Until now, or recently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, yeah, they're, they're popping up everywhere. Now, misidentification, you always got to throw that into the mix. You know, people see, you know, they, they live in Brooklyn, New York, and it's their first time out in the woods. They see something big and furry running through the woods. Well, could be a deer, could be a bear, uh, but to them it's a bipedal canine, so... It's um, it's very strange, uh, and I I think one of the things that I keep going back to the indigenous with questions is because some of the old drawings that were made up back in the day, and I'm talking about 17, 1800s, especially mid 1800s, skinwalkers. I mean, you look at the pictures that were drawn. Not many. There may be a half a dozen of them out there, but when you look at them. You know, they got the wolf head, they got the muscular arms, the big chest. I mean, you know, they have all the attributes of the uh, bipedal canines that we're seeing. Could it be supernatural? Uh, yeah, it could be. Uh, I doubt alien. Um, never had anything associated with craft and these things. It's basically by itself. We've never seen two together. Um, although one guy did report two, one was chasing some deer down and the other one saw him in a tree stand and came up to him. Um, but I, I don't know. I really don't know what they are. Do they chase down people? Like when What's I that? think of this creature, do they chase down people? When I think of this creature and the way I've heard you describe it over the last couple of years to me, Butch, it almost sounds almost like a zombie that it, you know, and what I mean by zombie, not not so much the, the, the death traits and that it's coming to, you know, make you into a zombie or me into a zombie, but just the way of the aggression and and the fact that it, it has the ability to chase down people pretty fast. Does this character or this creature have those type of traits? No, not from the reports. Um, but then again, you know, I don't, I don't know that for sure. Um, we know very little about them. Uh, our mode of operation is changing where we're not going back to where they were seen. We're going to uh, go to caves and a lot of abandoned towns and stuff where they were close to and, you know, see if we can get any evidence there. Uh, we have like 400 and some caves here in Pennsylvania and old mines. Um, majority of them you can get into. They're open, to, you know, they're open, they're not closed. And there's a couple on private property where you've got to um, get permission. But I don't know. Uh, for For an animal that size and the obvious strength that it would have, you know, covering 150 miles by 80 miles would be nothing, 
really. So we've never seen any little ones. We've never seen anything, or there's never been any report of a small or, you know, like juvenile or female or older or younger. I mean, we never had anything. They always exact same description. I mean, they don't even deviate on descriptions. The only place we get a deviation on some uh, of the uh, reports is the color of the fur. Some say dark brown, real dark brown. Some say black. Right. Okay, so this creature, I know with Bigfoot, there have been multiple reports over the years from hunters, campers, hikers who have had Sasquatch encounters, but have also heard them flee because there's strange lights coming in the sky closer and closer. Do we yeah, know? You hear that. Do we know if that's happening with the bipedal canines as well, that they are maybe being tracked by these UFO type craft? Nothing, nothing has ever come into a report like that. Now, Bigfoot report, Bigfoot reports, yes. There have been uh, Bigfoot sightings, tracks left, uh, lights in the skies, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Uh, but with the bipedal, no, none, none like that. Uh, and Dogman, I haven't really, uh, I don't get a whole lot of those reports. They're not coming to me. I basically either pass them off to somebody else out in that particular area. But nothing like that. Uh, with uh, the dog man, yeah, some people say they saw lights in, in the sky or they, see, they saw lighting in the woods. But there's a lot of reports where Bigfoot are seen, you know, with bright lights. There's a bright, bright flash of light, and the Bigfoot either appears or disappears. It's very strange. Mm. It's, and, you know, it's not, it's, you know, UFO hunting's to say, I'd be an idiot, but to say it's pretty easy, just got to look up. But um, this stuff here, I mean, you don't know where they're going to pop up next. Um, the, the closest we had two together, or, you know, two sightings together were the first and the second one we got. And there was a 10 mile um, separation between the first sighting and the second sighting. Um, and, you know, an expedition up there is, was totally weird anyway. So I just think there's something, they are something that has been around a very, very long time. And um, why, what purpose they have, um, I don't know. Uh, the indigenous that I talk to uh, say that they could be skinwalkers or they could be guardians or they could be ghosts from the past. Uh, you know, they have all kind of answers, but they're still scared to death of them. I mean, you know, um, when I gave the description to the Cherokee out in Oklahoma, what I was looking for, and that was, I think I had the second report. And right away, I thought Skinwalker, so, you know, got all the Cherokee Nation out there. And uh, uh, very, very nice, very informative told me what to look for, what they would look like, uh, what they could do, what they couldn't do. And then uh, 24 hours later, I got a package in the mail from the Cherokee, uh, their um, medicine man of uh, things that I should keep on my person at all times. <laughs> okay, so do you believe there is a relation then between these bipedal canines and maybe the skinwalkers? Yes, I do. I think there's there's some connection there. Uh, making that connection without sounding like an idiot would be crazy, but I I, I do believe that there's some kind of connection uh, because the areas are seen in when we do background uh, research on that particular area. It was either an uh, Indian encampment back in the day, or it was uh, uh, a large reservation or it was the site of a, of a battle between tribes. And the tribes that were here in Pennsylvania, they were all at war with each other. They were, it was like, that was nothing. That was like going to the diner for scrambled eggs. I mean, every day there was a war. And, and that, in those days, I mean, you could track that all the way down through into the Carolinas. Every tribe down there was at war with each other. So 
Is there something left over from these wars? Are they guardians? Are they guarding something? Are they lost souls? Are they uh, skinwalkers? Um, the only problem I have with that is that skinwalkers, um, you know, they're the they're the black side of the dark side of the arts, as far as um, Indian legend goes. You know, to become a skinwalker, you've got to kill a family member. Uh, and the skinwalker can be many things. It doesn't have to be in the shape of wolf, although a wolf is the most common. Yes. And they still have sightings reported today in, on the reservations of skinwalkers. Uh, some of the reservations, you know, uh, have put up fencing uh, around certain areas where they have powwows and meetings and stuff like that or, or, or rituals. Uh, because skinwalkers try to get in and get, you know, get involved. And it's very weird. It, it, it's it's kind of like nobody's ever written a book on how to investigate these things. So it's, it's kind of hit and miss, you know. Um, every piece of information we can get, every book I could buy, uh, every, everything I could find on them um, is really the only route I have to go. Um, you're not going to capture one of these things, that's for sure. You're not going to fight one. You're not going to kill one. Uh, so my best bet is to just, you know, get one on a thermal imaging camera, whether the kind we leave out or the kind that we carry. And, uh, once we get that proof, that's, that's when I'm stopping. <laughs> I'm not, doing, not going any further. <laughs> Butch, I have a question and we got about uh, 90 seconds here. Uh, this comes from Joey in our space travelers club. Was one of the gifts from the medicine man that you received a red string to be tied around your wrist? How does he know that? Oh, he is very, very in tune with the skinwalkers and with First Nations. Very in tune. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that, and I got a pouch with some stuff in it and... All I had to do was add a piece of silver to the pouch, and then I wear that and the string. Very cool. Very cool. I'm sure Joey will update us on that as it comes on out, because I'm sure he'll have another comment about that. But we only got about uh, 40 seconds here before we have to go to break. When it comes to this stuff and... You know, we don't know where to track it. We don't know where to look for it. I mean, it's always a crapshoot. Have you ever been close, Butch? Um, yes. On our first expedition, I think we were close. Um, we were in an area where uh, it was a full moon, uh, massive, a massive state park, um, uh, Lots of animals of all types, bear, wolf, uh, uh, koi wolves, coyotes, birds, you name it, everything that walks across. And the whole weekend, whole full moon weekend, we heard absolutely nothing. Our recorders picked up absolutely nothing. We could not keep a fire going at night. It would keep going out even though we wow. put accelerant on. Butch, hold on yeah. right there. I'm going to get you to hold on because we're going to go to break here at the bottom of the hour. Butch Witkowski's Strange Days continue right after this on Spaced Out Radio. More monster talk after this. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble f We're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at kajons.com. We're bringing you something new to the documentary world. Beyond the Spectrum will take you on an historic tour of topics like no other. Sasquatch, UFOs, government secrecy, and more. Keeping you on the edge of your seats through the eyes of legendary truth seekers like Steve Bassett, Richard Dolan, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, and Jack Kasher. Head on over to Amazon Prime or Tubi TV and check us out. Please leave a comment for the filmmakers on their film's Amazon page. 
Hey, space travelers. This is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you'd know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Finish off your weekend and kick off your new week with me, Everett Themer, right here on Spaced Out Sundays. I'm going to bring you great guests, a little bit of snark, and plenty of information to think about. But don't worry, there's going to be plenty of woo as well. We are going to hit everything in the paranormal and supernatural, including the odd psychic Sundays. So tune us in on Sunday, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience has proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. 
From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. We pass the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to remind all of you, if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you. You can listen to those and find them while you're listening to the show, all on our website, spacedoutradio.com. Butch Witkowski's Strange Days continues here as we are talking bipedal canines, what they're all about, where they're from, who they're dating these days. Butch is a regular TMZ of the cryptid world. His website, ufocop.com. Butch, welcome back. Yes, sir. Good to be back. Not a problem. Not a problem. We love having you here, my friend. Okay, right before the break, we were talking, and, and I asked you a question about whether or not these creatures are migrating to new areas to maybe gain their own territories. When we see animals like that, usually it's because the animal population is growing. Do you think this population of these bipedal canines is growing as well? Well, yeah, it could be. I mean, you know, when you get down south, the Rougarou has been in Louisiana for, you know, in the bayou in that area for over 100 years. Um, Description is pretty much the same. Um, but it's now that they're out in the four corners, um, you know, in the mountainous areas, they're being seen. Uh, yeah, they could be. I don't think they're migratory. I think uh, they get to an area, and that's where they stay, just like our guy here in Pennsylvania. He just stays within that lichen loop. Mm -hmm. So with the creatures, do we have any reports of any run-ins with Sasquatch? No, no. I get that question a lot, and no, we... uh, uh, No reports of that, uh, you know they're fighting in the woods or, you know, they have territorial areas. No, nothing like that. No reports ever. Or none that I can find anyway. I want to see that brawl, man. I want to see that brawl. That'd be be, be a dandy. (laughs) You know what? That's the type of brawl that literally you have to put on pay-per-view. You have to. You'd be a millionaire in no time. Absolutely. So with this creature... The people who are seeing it, are they mainly outdoors people, especially in the new cases that are popping up? And what I mean by outdoors people, like hunters or trappers, fish, fishermen, or are they just everyday people who are having the encounter? A uh, couple hunters, a uh, couple, uh, more than a couple, uh, hikers, um, people taking walks you know, on walking paths. You know, and a lot of our parts have walking paths and bicycle paths. Um, uh, they have, it's kind of general. I mean, uh, we've had um, park rangers have an encounter. Uh, we've had um, uh, a group of six people. They all live in the same block, uh, you know, a little ways down from the state park. But they, they once a month, no matter what the weather is, as long as it's they, they walk this walking path, which is about a mile, you know, just a kind of a friendly walk thing. And one walked out on there. We had uh, three ladies driving through a state park going to a picnic area to have a little picnic. And the same thing there where they came around a corner and one was standing on the tr- edge of the tree line. So it, it's, yeah, uh, no children ever. Uh, uh, always adults, uh, hunters, yes, um, armed, yes, uh, 
a guy walking his dog, uh, two dogs. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a mix of, uh, you know, hunters and, and normal everyday people. Mm-hmm. You mentioned had- park, ra- park rangers. Okay. Yep. And uh, up here, you know, we have the same thing going on in our forest with, with conservation officers. They are not very open about the reports that they get. Have you any inside source regarding what is happening and what park rangers or conservation officers are seeing? Well, uh, give you an idea how that works. Well, the guy that was up in the tree stand was accosted by the one that was not at the bottom of the tree stand, looking up at him growling, and you know he's pointing the thirty out six at him, um, and then he just kind of you know walked off. And he stayed in the tree stand for a while, and he got down, got ran to his car, and drove three or four miles down the road to the ranger station, reported it to them. And their answer to him was, uh, probably just a big dog. We get a lot of big dogs running around here. And the guy, he looked down, and I can't say the expletive he used, he said, but it was no blankety-blank dog. Do you think they are, are downplaying these situations for a reason? Well, uh, yeah, because the the the, uh, the the group of six, the three couples, um, they were about I don't know, maybe fifteen, twenty minutes into their walk when it stepped out of the wood, dark wooded, dark wooded area into a, like a little meadow meadow opening. And the one lady lost it. She started screaming top of her lungs, and that's when it started stepping toward them, showing teeth and growling. And they all turned around and ran. Um, they reported that to the police, and they basically just laughed them off. Kind of like asking a police officer who's ever seen a UFO. You know, they may tell you, but they're not going to report it to their boss. Interesting. Interesting. And I remember my buddy Mike up here talking to a conservation officer about Bigfoot one day, and this officer who has since been transferred to a different area up north, he had told Mike that they have recorded things in the forest, seen things in the forest that cannot be explained. However, the job and the job safety is a hell of a lot more important than coming clean about what they're actually seeing. When you hear a statement like that, what does that make you think? Well, it's it's like all things where people that know what's going on or they have an idea what's going on, and that's as far as they're going to let it go. Um, I, I mean, one of the strangest UFO cases I ever heard was a... Uh, uh, Route 30, uh, which is in Chester County, goes through Chester County here in Pennsylvania, and there was and uh, Route 10 crosses up. It's a huge intersection. I mean, huge. There was a multi-car pileup. A lot of people were killed. A lot of people were injured. State police were on the scene, and there was a state police helicopter showing uh, up above, you know, putting down light at the scene. And um, the officers that were there, the troopers that were there, everything stopped. I mean, they were cognizant. They could see what was going on, but nobody could move. Uh, nothing was happening. Uh, it was just like the whole scene stopped for a few minutes. And then the helicopter light went out, and the helicopter took off, and everything was back to where it was. But it was mm. just lost time. And uh, the, the gentleman that told me that was the helicopter pilot. And uh, he said, hey, he said, I have no idea. But he said for for a few minutes, he said, you know, maybe four or five minutes, he said, everything just stopped. He said, I wasn't doing anything at the controls. I was just sitting there, just like when it started. That's how it ended. And he said, off I went. I got back to the barracks, told their sergeant or corporal, whoever was on duty that night. And he said, that's the last I ever want to hear of this. And that's it. Wow. Are they in denial or are they, you think they're being told 
to shut up. Oh, they're being told to shut up. No, no doubt about it. I mean, you could be, you know, a traffic guy one day or an investigator one day, and you come up with a story like that. Next day, you're walking a beat up at Lake Erie. Hmm. The same thing in the military. I mean, there's lots of reports of UFO sightings over battle zones. <laughs> They go back to the Civil War. I mean, that's just unbelievable when you think about that. Mm -hmm. Are they keeping it quiet for the sake of of the government, like government secrets? I mean, I mean, yes, we're putting a little bit of tinfoil on the conspiracy woo here. Or are they doing it for the safety of the people so that way people still attend the parks? Well, I think there's a little bit of each, but uh, I spoke at a conference out in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm sorry, uh, Lawrence, Kansas. And um, uh, there was a gentleman, our tanker, uh, in the Gulf War. Uh, and they were, they were taking a break. You know, they were just tanks were parked and they were taking a break. And they saw a light in the distance, and uh, they thought it was just another chopper coming in. And um, this craft hovered above the tanks, and it was there for quite a bit, and lit the place up like a Christmas tree, and then uh, took off, and they reported it, and they were all told, you know, if you don't want to wind up in the kitchen department washing dishes and peeling potatoes, you'll shut up about this, and I don't want to ever hear it again. Wow. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. Does that include UFO reports, Bigfoot reports, or is this just about yes. the bipedals? Every, oh, everything, yeah, everything. Yeah. Interesting. Paranormal? Yeah, everything. How come we haven't heard more conservation officers or park rangers come out about this? Do they well, uh, out, of, out of 60 reports, I only have two. Um, where we went on our first expedition, uh, the, the officer was talking about uh, a lot of screaming and carrying on of a noise he's never heard, and he's been there at that location for like back at that point. It was like 11 or 12 years. He had never heard anything like that. He said, I know everything that's in this park, everything. He said, I don't know what it was. He said it came down from uh, down the old uh, uh, swamp area. And he said he never heard it again. And then when I asked him if he could like remember the date, uh, he told me it was like late October, last week of October. And that's when I had my first uh, report of a bipedal. That would have been within... 10 miles of the uh, location we were at, where we had the second one. And now as you see the creatures spreading out, Mm -hmm. aliens dropping them off, Butch? And I don't say that sarcastically. I mean, it's an honest question. Or are they just, you know, taking the long way around in order to get around the Great Lakes? I don't see them swimming around the Great Lakes unless they're borrowing a helicopter or something. No, uh, no, we have can't put any um, matchup between them and UFOs. But uh, and, and again, I don't think they're migratory because we've had them in the summer, we've had them in the winter, you know, we've had them in the spring, the fall. I mean, nothing like that where you know we don't see them in the winter time. I mean, they've been around all year, but uh, I mean, the reports have been coming in all time of the year. Um, the ones that are seen out in the mountainous areas like Colorado, Utah, down up through there, um, they tend to be more described uh, as the indigenous would describe a skinwalker. And um, I, or a Wendigo, but um, yeah. it's, it's, uh, 
pretty much in my mind the same type of situation that they're running to out there that we're getting here. Might be looking a little different, but still the same. Are these you know, dogmen, Butch, are these dogmen, are they different in every type of sighting? Like, say, for instance, with Sasquatch, the larger Sasquatch that we hear reported are, are more West Coast. They're more uh, docile, whereas the, the ones that we hear of in the bayou and in down in Florida with the booger and all all of those strange names they have for the creature, they seem to be a lot more intense and aggressive. Are, do we see that with these bipedal reports as well? Um, really, the only one that showed any intensity was the one that came out to those uh, hikers, uh, the three the three couples, and the uh, where step started stepping toward them, growling, and, you know, that kind of action. Uh, now, could that have been uh, defensive or just scared him that this lady was screaming at the top of her lungs? And then we had the, the one with the hunter up in the tree, where it sat at the bottom of the tree and just hunched down and looked up at him and growled. So that's the only two instances we've had. Uh, the reports that come in from other areas other than here are mainly Bigfoot hunters uh, or, you know, researchers, uh, geologists. Uh, uh, one guy was actually a contractor building a cabin. Uh, so out there, they're more out in the open. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, there's, there's wooded areas out there, but not like we have here or you have up in British Columbia. I mean, they got a lot of mountainous areas that are an open range. And um, then, of course, they're seeing, you know, we still get the report, indigenous reports. I mean, they're seeing them all the time. So, and they just describe them as a skinwalker. And a skinwalker can take any uh, shape he wants to. He's a shapeshifter, so. Mm-hmm. This Where we is haven't the first seen that. These re- we haven't seen it with these reports as far as uh, shape shifting. Yeah, this is the first time I've, uh, that I can recall that I actually hear you combining this bipedal canine with a skinwalker. Is this new information to you, or what has led you to this conclusion? I think what's led me to the conclusion, and it's kind of kind of a half-assed conclusion is where it's seen, there is always a connection to the indigenous, either right where they were, right where they are, or where the report, or where they were seen in the report. The first report that we went to the expedition and <laughs> kind of wanted to make me just turn the truck around and go home right at that moment. When we got there at the location, checked in with the ranger, and we basically told him we were checking on Bigfoot reports. We didn't tell him what we were really looking for. And he said, yeah, I'll check on you. Keep track. You know, and he warned us what type of animals could be around, blah, 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 blah. And he said, uh, last campsite on the, at, at the top of the mountain is the one you guys can have. And the campsites are all marked. They have an Indian name, like uh, Apache, Navajo. Well, we get to ours, and it was Cherokee. Yeah, mm-hmm. twice Very cool. Very cool. Out of, 20 that. Camp, out, of, out of 20 campsites, we get Cherokee. Yeah. So, I so guess, with, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I mean, I guess, you know, just putting stuff together, like pretty much everywhere they've been seen, there is, there's a, an indigenous connection of some sort whether it was a, uh, a place where they lived or a place where they fought or a place where there was a massacre that took place. I mean, it's all, there's always something, you know. And the only oddball out of all of them uh, was uh, a mother and her daughter. Uh, they go to a cemetery to take a dog for a walk because it's just a big, open, old cemetery. Don't even think it's used anymore. And the, the girl 
16 or 17 years old. She's sitting in the front seat. Mom takes the dog out. And she starts walking down the path. And uh, uh, the, the daughter's in there listening to the radio. And she, the car moves. The car shakes a little bit. And she turns around and looks. And she thinks there's something behind the car, but she can't really see it. And she turns around. She turns back to look over at the driver's window. And guess what's standing there? So she starts losing it, screaming and carrying on. And then it uh, went around to the back of the car and started to shake the car. And uh, her mother was out of earshot. And when she gets back, you know, the kid's a raving maniac. And uh, that was that. But that was a cemetery. So the mother, who's got more, more balls and brains, the girl said it ran behind the shed, and it's uh, one of these utility sheds where they keep the lawnmowers and rakes and all that stuff. Oh, uh, she starts walking around to the back of it. I'm thinking to myself, "Lady, you got more guts than I do." And uh, she said she heard something run through into the woods, wooded area. Then she got back in the car, and then the daughter's telling her what it was, and they were never back again. <laughs> and then we had a girl, uh, another girl, walking the dog. Um, a smaller dog, uh, like a Pinkanese or something like that. And, and the, the house is, uh, it's um, a cul-de-sac, and the cul-de-sac is right across the street from an entrance to a state park. And, you know, her walk was just to go down around the circle, just make a big circle and come back to the house. And uh, when she went past the entrance to the state park, she could hear something walking aside of her in the woods. She'd stop, it would stop. She'd go on, it would go on. The dog isn't doing anything. The dog just like, you know, he's just panting and carrying on. And they get around to where the wooded area is closer now to that circle. Now the dog starts going berserk. And she steps it up and gets back in the house, tells her dad. And he runs out front and he sees what he described as a large wolf standing at the gate. And he ran back in the house to get a gun when he came out and was gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now, we did send out investigators, and they did find an impression. It was not a print. It was an impression. But, uh, you know, it was uh, large, and but you couldn't cast it. It was in a, a mushy area of a, a creek bed. But uh, we got pictures of it, measurements, and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, all I tell people is there's something out there. We don't know what it is. I mean, we've got descriptions. We've got, you know, drawings made up. Uh, I mean, we, we've done all that. Uh, we've got the uh, equipment to go do what we got to do. And uh, uh, technology is the only thing I can think of that's going to catch them. I mean, I, I can think of nothing else. You know, it's not like we're going to run around in 180 miles by 50 miles wide area looking for this. So for sure. Hopefully, you know, hopefully maybe this cave thing will pan out or these old abandoned towns and stuff. All right, Butch, I'm going to get you to hold on right there because we got you for another 30 minutes on Spaced Out Radio, Hour 3 of Strange Days, coming up right after this on the Mighty SOR. feeling a little spicy tonight what to do what to do why not get bumblefoot four million scoville units of pure hard rock bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors the burning bumble tone it down a bit with bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything spice it up bumble me baby bumblefoot hot sauce get it today at kajans.com so you love talk radio then you'll love talkstreamlive.com 
TalkStream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. A little bit of science, a little bit of skepticism. Add a dash of snark and you have the makings of Spaced Out Sundays with me, Everett Thiemann. Together we will look into the reality of the paranormal with an open eye and rational thought. Oh, did I mention there'll be plenty of woo as well? Your time spent with Spaced Out Sundays will make the night even better. The chat rooms are open, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. 
The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up? All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the store you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hello, everyone. This is Ryan Stacy from the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESSA. We're glad to team up with Spaced Out Radio to help investigate your experiences on the SOR Sightlines Report. Together, we'll investigate the strange sightings and occurrences you've had. We're looking for answers just like you. So fill out a Sightlines Report on the Spaced Out Radio website, and let's figure out what's going on together. you like to connect with us head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info now back to dave scott and sor we're underway in the third and final hour of spaced out radio tonight i am your host dave scott i appreciate all of you tuning on in we say hello to everyone listening in on wqee 99.1 fm in noon in georgia uprn 107.7 fm in new orleans KDUN AM 1030 in Reedsport, Oregon, KZFX 93.7 FM in Ridgecrest, California, and KDNF AM 1560 in Dangerfield, Texas. On the digital side, we're proud to broadcast on Kingdom of Nye Radio and Revolution Radio. Remember, all of our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Dingonic. Dingonic is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, do a little shopping at the SOR vault, grab a great book from We Read the Night. Join the space travelers for five bucks a month, and Captain Shirk has you all up to date on the SOR Newswire. For the final time tonight, we introduce Butch Witkowski. Strange Days happens the final Monday of every month where Butch updates us on all the weird, strange happenings in the cryptid, paranormal, and supernatural world. His website, uforcop.com. Butch, welcome back. Yes, sir. What do we got going? Let's start off with a question from Tim in the chat room here who is asking, what's your opinion on the situation in Kentucky and not county canine bites, no bear coyotes can't drag three to 400 feet straight up a hillside. This happened to an 11 year old boy. What's your thoughts on that case and break down that case for people who may not know. Well, it, it's almost reminiscent of another case down South. Uh, uh, the kid was chewed up pretty good. Uh, and like Tim says, a coyote couldn't drag three or 400 feet straight up a hillside, but a koi wolf could. And uh, I think that's where the investigators are going with that. I don't know how far they're going to go with it because uh, we have the, uh, that's still an open case of the lady, the uh, church lady uh, that was found pretty much ripped to shreds uh, down in uh, South Carolina or North Carolina. And till this day, they have no idea what did it to her. I mean, the autopsy, all the DNA was taken and stuff and showed no marks or any evidence whatsoever of any type of animal 
but she was just torn limb from limb. And she wasn't eaten, uh, which kind of always takes bear out of the question because if a bear kills you, a bear's going to eat you. And then you go with uh, the other strange case down in that area, which is, uh, I think it was like 25 or 30 miles away, where a toddler goes missing in, you know, extremely cold weather. They can't find him, and then they find him a day later. And um, uh, he says that uh, a uh, uh, teddy bear took care of him, a big teddy bear. Well, first of all, a bear find a little kid like that, the kid would have been an hors d'oeuvre. Uh, and his description didn't match bear. Uh, so uh, they kind of, I think, I'm not sure, I didn't see any follow-up on it for a while now. I think they think that uh, a Bigfoot took care of the kid and kept him warm overnight. But bear, no way. A bear out of hibernation, hungry, Little kid like that, mm -mm. it's a free meal. Would have been all, would have been all over in a matter of minutes. The Kentucky you know that, case right? is still an open. Case. That Kentucky case is still an open case. Uh, I don't know if they've added any more to it, uh, but I know he had a, a ton of bites. Uh, and 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 Tim's right. A coyote couldn't drag uh, an eleven-year-old three or four hundred feet straight up a hillside. A koi wolf could. Um, I don't know if they have mountain lion down in that area. Uh, I'm not really familiar with Kentucky, but uh, that might be something to look into. To, uh, I mean, a, a cat could, no problem. A cat will take a, a full-grown guy my size and drag me off. But uh, it's just another one of those weird cases, and, you know, they go on all the time. That lady, I, I mean, you know, when you read the read that report, I mean, she was just shredded, taken apart, and they, till this day, they don't know what killed her. They did all kind of testing, DNA, see what kind of animal it was. There were no tracks, no footprints. So, you know, what happened to her? What killed her? Almost makes you think, sometimes, you know, they find these bodies, you know, out in the woods have been there, there's nothing but bones left. You often wonder how they died, you know, and, and are the are the investigators telling you the truth, like, you know, they just had a heart attack or or a stroke or something like that, or did they find their bones scattered over half a mile, you know. Strange, very strange. That case with the young toddler who, you know, kind of was protected by the big teddy bear. He was three mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. And then found in a, a thistle patch mm -hmm. with barely any scrapes, no no tears or anything to his his clothing. And it, it was a very, very right. strange case that we were following here as well. It's amazing how quickly that, that case disappeared. Yep, sure did. Uh, you'd pretty much have trouble finding it on Google. I don't believe it was a bear by any means. No way. No way without a bear. And another thing they said, they couldn't find any footprints around the child, you know, in the patch when they got him out. They looked and they, they didn't find any anything that would have indicated that anything was in there with the boy other than the boy. Yeah, that 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 case really, really, I don't want to say it bothers me. I just find it very, very strange mm. about that. Oh, yeah. Very strange, you know, oh, and, yeah. you know, I just don't know how that happens, you know, really don't. Do you think that, you know... When it comes to children having these type of encounters with strange creatures, do you think that that maybe, just maybe, some of these creatures, whether it's Bigfoot or whatever, have a little bit of a soft spot for children? It could be. Yeah, yeah it could be. I mean, you know, 
Um, there are very few, <laughs> not even a handful, I don't think, of bona fide reports of a Bigfoot attack, you know, or um, where somebody was mauled or torn apart or eaten or whatever. I mean, it just, there's just none of those available really, but a handful and they go way back. And um, that during the gold rush and Klondike area, uh, I ate, I ate that period of time. But, um, you know, if it was a female Bigfoot, maternal instinct, it's strong. I mean, um, the case of the uh, that Indian boy over in India that was pretty much raised by um, a wolf, a wolf's uh, a den. I mean, a lot of strange things happen out there. You know, you got the the steps that show up in the woods and then they disappear. Uh, here in Pennsylvania, we had uh, in the 411 series, we had 39 missing people in the woods. Um, two were found out of 39. Uh, the one hunter just was lost, exhausted, and died of a heart attack. He was an elderly gentleman. The other guy was in his 50s and um, he fell, cracked his skull open. So, but 50% of those reports are children. I think the oldest one was 10. Never found. Gone. And you know and I know, especially up where you live, a bear killed something, he hides it. Drag it off and hide it. Very strange. It's just so strange. Okay, so let, let's step into the paranormal world here as we only got about, you know, 10, 11 minutes left with you. You have been investigating a case that's ongoing that happened about at a farmyard where there was a lot of strange occurrences happening there. For people who may yes. not remember that case, if you can describe that and if there's any update to it. Um, the case started with a, uh, a UFO report, a gentleman saying that uh, on, on the farm where he lived, that uh, there's mountains on both sides. Uh, there's uh, an area of farmland and houses. Um, if I had to do a measurement, it'd be like four city blocks wide, and then there's a couple fields, and there's a mountain. If you go the other way, there's a mountain behind you. And uh, he was seeing strange lights coming over the mountain, and, you know, he pretty much described them as slow-moving orbs. He didn't hear any engines. It wasn't a helicopter or anything like that. So I went down and uh, to the house because where I lived before, it was only seven, eight miles away. So I just went down, we stood out there and looked, and we saw these strange lights. And then... Um, he said, maybe we can get a better look from the, the back of the house. So we went, and this is an old farm. The farm was built in the 1800s, early 1800s. So we went around to the back of the house. And um, I had a FLIR camera, a FLIR device. And I was just looking, and I saw this. I don't even know how to describe it anymore. A, a, an entity of some type at the end of a new chicken barn that was being built. Now, this thing is like 500 foot long and 30 feet wide, but it was under construction. The roof was on it, the sides were on it, but nothing else, no windows, doors, or anything like that. And then I scanned down to my left, following the roof line, there was another one smaller. Uh, no distinct shape or form. Um, it was almost looking, uh, it almost looked like you were driving down a hot highway and the heat shimmering off of the highway. Um, so I took a couple shots, uh, pictures, uh, with the FLIR and, um, got a hold of Lon Strickler and told him about it. And, uh, we made arrangements to have uh, him meet me and then we would go down there. He brought his son along and, uh, to see what was going on. And I said, you know, I don't even know if they're going to be there. And he said, well, we'll see. And uh, we got uh, 
got there and uh, we went inside to talk to the owner and it got dark. So we went outside and got the two floor devices out and started looking and they were still there. One was above uh, a doorway that wasn't quite finished yet. And the other was at the end of the roof where I saw it, but it was in a little bit to the left. And Lon walked up to the door and um, as he's going up through there, uh, he's hearing all kind of noise. And I said, what kind of noise is you hearing? He said, it almost sounds like chanting. And I went like, well, I don't hear anything. And I asked his son, Matt, if he heard anything. He said, no. And um, the strangest thing was when I was there, that was in January. And when we went up together, it was March. And um, to get to the back of the house, I had to walk through a pile of leaves in the driveway that were kind of in the corner of a barn in the driveway. The day before we got the day before we got there, there was a, there was a really bad windstorm came through that prop, came through that area, and it knocked over uh, took roofs off a of barn, knocked over a couple tractor trailers, uh, took a roof off a house, pretty much destroyed another farm, uh, tore up like 50 trees out of a tree farm uh, across the road, did as much damage to a farm and, a, and another tractor trailer and a dump truck rolled them over, and. When I was walking back uh, to talk to Lon, I had to walk through the same pile of leaves. I thought, that's nuts. So I started walking around the house. There wasn't even a shingle missing. I talked to the owner. I said, do you have any damage? He said, no. I mean, all around that house was destroyed. I mean, destroyed. I, all the pictures, I got all the pictures of it. It's just unbelievable. Tractor trailers loaded with grain, rolled over, flipped on the side. Roofs off of barns, one chicken uh, 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 chicken barn, I call them barn, it's not a coop, it's a barn, a big barn, uh, across the street was leveled. Leveled. This guy didn't even lose a shingle on his old house. And the leaf pile, till this day, and I was down there not too awful long ago, they're still there, but they're not on the top of the roof anymore. They're now, they're out in the field. One's on the far end of the field, and the other entity is uh, on a pile of dirt. And that's been there for a while. I have no idea what they are. They don't do anything. They don't move. They just are there. You can see them on the floor, no problem. And uh, that pile of leaves is still there. Never moved. Now, the other strange thing was, if when we were standing in the driveway, I said to Lon, I said, you know, I often saw this light straight across the field. And uh, he looked. And he said, yeah, I see it too. And we got binoculars out. And it's just a red light, then it changes to blue, then it kind of fades out, then it goes back to red, then it changes to blue, then it gets to green, then it fades out again. So in the daytime, the next day, I drove over there. I walked that whole area. It's direct in line with the guy's driveway, so I knew exactly where I was. There's nothing there. It's just a, a hillside filled with brush. There's nothing in the brush. Um, there was no EMF reading or any, any type. Um, so I went back that night and the lights were back till this day, the lights are still there and I don't know what they are or where they come from or what they're doing, but I can't find the lights. Now, weren't there ghosts being seen running across the roof of this barn? No, that was the entities. Weird. Yeah, and they're still there, only they've moved now. The barn's completed. The one's out far, uh, farther out in the field. Uh, there's a big field behind the barn, but still visible. And the one is on a pile of dirt that they dug up to lay the foundation, I believe, for the barn. Took samples of the dirt, took samples of the field. They don't show anything. But then when we did a historical search, this guy's property, uh, when it was built in the early 1800s, was uh, downtown central for the Susquehannock tribe, which was the biggest and largest warring tribe in the state of Pennsylvania. Hmm. 
So somewhere on the somewhere on the property is either a burial ground or sacred ground, or they built the house on it. And also, uh, when Lon was there walking, there's a pond on the other side of the house. When when he walked around the pond and stuff, he could have swore they heard, you know, like uh, chanting and drums. And you know, he said like it was almost like a hoot nanny. I went like, wow. So. Come spring, we're going to put a, uh, a camera in the water and see what we can see in that pond. Well, hey, we only got about three minutes left with you. We should also get a Mothman update. Uh, well, up in Chicago area, they're going crazy. <laughs> they're all over the place. Uh, I know there's a couple uh, videos coming out uh, on the investigations. I think one is out already. Uh, and there's a couple books uh, coming out from Phantoms and Monsters, um, 40 and Team, on the uh, reports out there. Um, there were some recent sightings down in Point, Ple- uh, Point Pleasant, uh, West Virginia, of Mothman. I don't know a lot about them because there wasn't a lot published about them. And, uh, but everything is going the way it's gone. It's just been a weird last two months. The sightings in Chicago, have they spread out elsewhere as well? Yeah. Yeah, they've moved uh, uh, the other side of uh, the Great Lakes. Uh, they got some in Wisconsin. There was a, I think there was a sighting in Minnesota. Um, yeah, they're hot and heavy. They, they, they haven't slowed down a bit. Still seen around the Great Lakes. What do you think is causing these? Personally, I think it's misidentification. I think these are just big birds. You take a sand crane or a heron, you're talking about a big bird. Yes. And, you know, they fly with their legs back, so that that would look like a tail. And then they have the long neck. That would look, it would almost look like a dragon. Very true. Just my opinion. Well... Your opinion is popular around here and wanted around here, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, should people fear this? Uh, no, I don't think so. Nothing's, nobody's been attacked or anything like that. I mean, there's there's been a couple around O'Hare Airport where, you know, they were these things were like standing by a fence and stuff like that and, and really hasn't been any overt action toward the person that was seeing it. So, but you never know, you know, who knows? All right, my friend, we only got about 30 seconds left with you tonight. Another show that has flown on by, tell everybody where they could find your information and where they can send some reports and see what you're up to. They can send reports to euphorcop.com. That's U-F-O-C-O-P, U-F-O-R-C-O-P.com or Facebook. They can message me. Uh, or you four cop uh, site on uh, Facebook and uh, also on Twitter. Awesome, awesome, my friend. Always a pleasure to have you on Spaced Out Radio, and we'll do it all again on Monday, March thirtieth, with another edition of Strange Days, my friend. You got it. Hard to believe another one has just flown on by. Yeah, really. Butch Witkowski, everybody, UFORCOP.com if you want to check it on out, especially if you have a sighting or a report you want filed. Coming up next, we have the SOR Newswire and the Thought of the Day. Stay tuned. Spaced Out Radio continues. At SpacedOutRadio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at SpacedOutRadio.com today.
We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience has proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble f- we're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at kajons.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Looking for something new to push your limits? Look Beyond the Spectrum, a new docuseries featuring some of the best researchers in the world when it comes to everything from UFOs, government cover-ups, and Bigfoot in the forest. Truth seekers like Steve Bassett, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, Richard Dolan, as well as others all chip in to bring their knowledge to you. Beyond the Spectrum can be found on Amazon as well as Tubi TV. Tell us what you think on our Amazon page. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckrude, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hey Spaced Out Radio fans, it's John Rezig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. Our goal is to make the life of veterans, first responders, and those with rare medical conditions 10% happier. We do this by donating one grant item, ranging from dance to therapy programs to prosthetic limbs, to those who need it most. To contribute to Spaced Out Radio's official charity, head over to chivecharities.org and become a donor today. Hello, Space Travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at YouTube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! Bye! 
A little bit of science, a little bit of skepticism. Add a dash of snark and you have the makings of Spaced Out Sundays with me, Everett Thiemann. Together we will look into the reality of the paranormal with an open eye and rational thought. Oh, did I mention there'll be plenty of woo as well? Your time spent with Spaced Out Sundays will make the night even better. The chat rooms are open, 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, right here at spacedoutradio.com. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR's headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to remind all of you that you can check out all of our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. You could rock out to Bumblefoot, do a little shopping at the SOR vault, grab a great book from We Read the Night, join the space travelers for five bucks a month, and so much more. Speaking of the news, let's get to Captain Shirk's Newswire, shall we? The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR Newswire at the back end of every show where we get to the weird, the strange, the wacky, and the sometimes dangerous. A self-styled daredevil died on Saturday after a rocket in which he launched himself crashed into the ground. A colleague and witness said, Mad Mike Hughes died after the homemade rocket crashed on private property near Barstow in the afternoon of Saturday. Waldo Stakes, a colleague who was at the rocket launch, said Hughes, who was 64 years old, was killed. It was unsuccessful and he passed away, Stakes said. He declined further comment. Justin Chapman, a freelance journalist, was there, said he and his w- wife witnessed the crash. The rocket appeared to rub against the launch apparatus, which might have torn the parachutes attached to it. The rocket came down straight to the ground, he said. Yes, Hughes is best known for being a flat earther. And he was trying to get his rocket, homemade, straight up into the atmosphere so he could prove or disprove the curvature of the earth. Looks like it did not work. And, you know, now he'll find out what's on the other side. A trail runner who broke his leg on a remote snowy trail in the Olympic Peninsula over the weekend said he had to crawl for nearly seven hours to get to cell phone service to call for help, then crawled several more hours until rescuers found him. I had to crawl on all fours, my knees and hands. It's a rocky, snowy, dirty, wet trail, and after a while, my knees were just raw, said Joseph Oldendorf. Yeah, he says he had no idea to put his shoes over them so I would at least, as he says, have had some traction and a little bit of protection, but they're still really messed up. Oldendorf, who has been since released from hospital, said he crawled out for about ten and a half hours after he slipped on ice and broke his leg three inches up from the ankle about 5.45 Friday night or afternoon. He said he was running back to the Duckabush trailhead about 12 miles into a 20-mile run when he was injured. I had to be facing chest down for it not to be flopping out of alignment, he says. After crawling for hours in sub-freezing temperatures, Oldendorf said he finally had a cell phone service to call for help around 12.30 Saturday morning and was located by rescuers on the ground close to 4.30 a.m. I had no idea how long it was going to be, and I knew that I was 
Still probably six miles down trail, said Oldendorf. I stopped to lay down and stay warm, thinking they might be there relatively soon, but I was way too cold and there was no way I could do it without moving, so I just decided to keep on moving towards them. The 26-year-old said the thought of his family also kept him going. I don't want my family to hear I died in the wilderness, he says. I think it'd be unbearable. A Coast Guard helicopter crew arrived around 7 in the morning and airlifted him, who... Uh, Oldendorf, who was hypothermic when he was found, to Harborview Medical Center for treatment. This is definitely a rugged part of the Olympic National Forest, said firefighter Jerry Rule with the Brennan Fire Department. We actually found the patient about four and a half miles in, which is usually pretty unusual for a typical fire department to go in. Rule was in the group of rescuers who reached Oldendorf first. And uh, don't take so, uh, doesn't take much to take you out of the game up on those trails and by yourself, said Rule. He's a lucky guy. We're on our way out after evacuating him by helicopter. We only ran into two other individuals, and they were not going as far as we were. Oh, you should see pictures of his knees. Horrible. They're all cut up. All right. I don't get this one. Don't get it at all. Women who cook food while on their period will be reborn as dogs, according to an Indian religious leader whose sermon has since gone viral. The guru who made this statement, Krishna Swarup Dasi, is a member of the major Swami Narayanan sect of Hindus in Prime Minister Narendra Modi's home state of Gujarat. As well as his comments about women, the Swami said that there that men who eat the food all right prepared by menstruating women would be reborn as bullocks adding i don't care if you do not like my views but this is written in the scriptures oh yeah yeah prejudice against women on their periods is widespread among conservative hindus an issue that came to the forefront in 2018 when the supreme court ruled a temple's ban on women of menstruating age was an unconstitutional affront to religion of freedom according to media reports in india daji is a swami or religious leader associated with the Swaminarayan Temple, an organization that runs a girls' college in the town of Bhuj, where more than 60 pupils were ordered remo- to remove their underwear so staff could check if they were menstruating. Oh, these perverts. The Guru's sermon appears to be defending the college over the incident, which occurred on February 11th. It has led to a public outcry and the arrest of three senior members of staff at the school. An investigation into the incident found that the girls were having their periods, were being made to eat meals separately from the rest of their classmates. The checks were carried out when staff became suspicious that the pupils were flouting this rule. Heaven forbid, like they have a choice in this. Dazi accused women of being careless about their periods, which he said was like doing penance. Yeah. And as a solution for when women are menstruating, he suggests that men should learn cooking. It will help you. The guru's sermons are routinely posted online in uh, Temple's YouTube account, though it was unclear when and where the comments in question were made. Yeah, this guy is just off his rocker. I would like to see how women are supposed to control this. It happens monthly. Hate to tell them. Happens monthly. Unless they're pregnant. What an idiot. What a moron, a buffoon. Use all the Bugs Bunny terms there. A Texas man who was critically injured when he veered off the road after crashing into a deer was able to phone 911, that is, himself, despite being impaled by a two-inch metal rod, according to his family. 25-year-old Jacob Tabor was driving to work in Willis, just about 50 miles north of Houston, on Tuesday, around 4 a.m., when he struck a deer on Highway 75 and lost control of his car. Tabor, a pipe fitter, crashed into a fence and was impaled in the abdomen by a two-inch pole. That can't feel good. He was conscious enough to call 911 himself, and when first responders arrived, they did find him unconscious. 
We have a thing called the golden hour. In the golden hour, you want to get him extricated and get him to the hospital as quickly as possible to prevent any life-threatening injuries, North Montgomery County Fire Department Battalion Chief Bill Dirk says. But it took fire providers 30 minutes to get Tabor out of the truck as they were forced to cut the fence off to get access to him. If someone were to remove that pole or take it out of his chest, it would have caused a major loss of blood. According to a GoFundMe page, Tabor underwent surgery and is now in stable condition, but is expected to have several more surgeries to reconstruct several organs that were damaged from the fence post. No kidding. This young dad is lucky to be alive. He's a father of two little girls, said to be in ICU where he faces at least six months of recovery. His stepmother, Jennifer, says that he has been sedated since his surgery, but was in good spirits when he was first brought to hospital. She said he is expected to go several exploratory surgeries over the next few weeks where doctors will assess the extent of his internal damages. Good luck to him. And the Illinois family said a wall in their nine-year-old daughter's bedroom has been picking up radio signals for years and no one knows why. Richard Smith said voices and music were repeatedly heard inside the wall in daughter Brianna's room at their Lockport home, and the family eventually determined something inside the wall was picking up a local AM radio station. The station, Christian radio station AM 1160, owned by Salem Media Group, sent out an engineer to investigate but was unable to identify the issue. He said, I gotta be honest with you. I don't know what is acting as a speaker. There is nothing I can explain of why you're actually hearing it. He said the wall was opened up and the electrical grounding was examined, but the family was still unable to figure out where the radio station was being picked up. Sometimes when we think we've arrived at a solution, the next season comes around and it's back. Household objects have been known to pick up radio signals in the past. A man reported in 2018 that radio signals were being picked up by the metal components in his household fan while the power was off. She got ghosts. Definitely got ghosts. A homeowner who called bee removal experts to investigate the insects in his backyard said he was shocked to learn there were 100,000 to 150,000 bees living in a 70-pound hive under his shed. Herb Herbert, what a great name, Herb Herbert of El Cayon says that he started noticing the bees in his backyard about two years ago, and the insects seem to return every year. The bees were coming in and out of a small hole at the bottom end of my shed. He called Be Nice Wildlife Management, and a a technician pulled back a corner of the shed to discover a 70-pound beehive measuring about 30 inches long. His estimate was that there was probably 100,000 bees and at least 20 to 25 per minute going in and out of the hive. That puts it at around 1,200 an hour. Only 10% of the bees leave the hive. The other 90% stay in at work. The hive and the bees were safely relocated without damaging the colony. Imagine the honey, the free honey this guy would have got. My goodness. The purported owner of a ghost ship grounded off Ireland's south coast after drifting crewless for more than a year has made contact with authorities, a government agency has said. The 250-foot cargo ship MV Alta ran aground on rocks outside the village of Ballycotton near the southern city of Cork during high seas caused by Storm Dennis last weekend. Under Irish legislation, the Revenue Services Act, as the receiver of wreck and has administrative responsibility for dealing with the wrecked vessel. I can advise that an individual purporting to represent the owner has made contact and the receiver of wreck will be pursuing the matter further, said Revenue Spokesperson. Legislation dictates that a person claiming ownership has up to a year to register their case with the receiver, which can then give them the opportunity to salvage the vessel. Cork County Council said Tuesday it was satisfied that Alta was not causing pollution spillage in the surrounding waters. A marine contractor boarded the vessel and found fuel levels to be quite low. There is no cargo on board, but a number of sealed containers of oil and other materials incidental to the running of a ship were found, which may pose pollution risk in the event of their spillage. The local authority said in a statement, plans are currently being evaluated in order to have the materials safely removed from the wreck. 
And finally tonight, want to make $636? A British scrap car recycling website is accepting applications for an unusual dream job, getting paid that amount to watch all 24 James Bond films. Car Take Back UK said it is accepting applications on its website for the license to watch job, which entails watching one James Bond movie every night for 24 consecutive nights. The winning applicant will receive all 24 films for free and will be required to watch one each night for two weeks and record their thoughts on the movies. The website said the winning applicant will also be required to fulfill a top secret assignment that won't be revealed until the person is selected. The application is including questions, choosing the favorite Bond film, and sharing opinions on the subject, including who should be the next actor to take on the role. We've got a great clown from Marty on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio tonight. Thank you, Marty. Thought of the Day happens every night at this time where we ask a question on our Facebook and Twitter pages, then read your responses on the air because we love the audience participation around here. Today's Thought of the Day is as follows. What's the most important lesson you've learned to date in investigating the unknown? Let's start off with old Joe and his bandana. That the word unknown usually explains your best evidence. Judith, make sure you close the door when you leave, figuratively, verbally, and physically. Crypto Podcast. Hey guys, how you doing? Ghosts aren't the only thing you might run into when ghost hunting. Sometimes you stumble on a giant hive of bees. Sev. My interpretation of my ET contact is determined by my personal filters and lens from which I view myself, others, and the world. Nicole, bring extra snacks. Someone else is always hungry, too. Scott, no matter how things change, they always stay the same. Isn't that true? Adam, don't worry about what anyone else thinks. William, stay objective. And dispassionate. David, expect the unexpected. Don't take anything for granted. I guess that applies to life in general. Debbie, don't follow others. Do what you're guided to do. We're all different and too many follow others or try to be like others or feel they know everything. We should all be helping each other instead of competing. No one still knows anything, so why scam, lie, or fake? Bottom line, it's still unknown, so stop trying to be experts or famous. Leon, I've learned that everything is connected. Caden, trust only what you see yourself. Gail, I don't investigate the unknown, and what I've learned over time is the unknown is rather indifferent to my preference to be left alone. Eric, Eric Mitchell, I got to meet him this weekend. Hey, Eric. I've learned discernment. Studak, the unknown is still unknown. Paul, patience and always count on your team. Always. Kelly and Kelly's beard. I have learned that even though a story can be proven false, hoaxed, or an un- or an explainable experience, some in this field will disregard all that evidence just to keep themselves relevant. Not to say I'm discouraged, not in the least. To me, that means that the true stories are just a little harder to find, like your 10 millimeter socket when you really need it. Ivan, don't, unless you accept the consequences. Jaretta, never assume anything. Dave, Never count on a show by a certain female show host. Ouch. Did I read that? Probably shouldn't have. Marty, don't be concerned about other people's opinions about what you are doing. Opinions are like buttholes. Everybody has one. Landon, I learned that we're never going to die. David, that whatever and whenever you thought you started, you had already been doing it for a long time. Jason, be prepared to be scrutinized, but try not to let it get to you. Barry, that for every question that we believe we answer, there's a hundred more still left wanting for an answer. That's from half a century of research, first in the lab and then in the field. 
Craig, Sasquatch can be dangerous, curious, and everything in between, just like humans. A serial killer and a saint could live in the same town. Olaf, always bring a towel. Thanks, Olaf Phillips. Great meeting him on this weekend, past weekend, too. Great guy. Fantastic beard, by the way. Mike. That there are so many amazing people who become accustomed to the maze of lies and mysteries that they forget how to execute the very praxis they espouse. Robert. Quality simulating encounters with unknown or inexplicable phenomena may boost human health and well-being. Therefore, a failure of imagination must not be allowed to invade a scientific investigation of the unknown. David, there's a lot I do not know about the unknown. Tim, I want to keep an open mind. Joe, final word. Don't share it on Twitter. We'll do the thought of the day again tomorrow. We thank everybody on Twitter and Facebook for participating tonight. Thank you so much. Big thanks to Captain Shirk and the SOR Newswire for preparing some fantastic news. The captain is always up for the good deed of the day and getting our news run all set up for you on our website, spacedoutradio.com. And a big thank you to Butch Witkowski from UF4Cop.com. Butch comes in the final Monday of every month for Strange Days. Butch's next show appearance will be on March 30th. Yes. We'll see where all of these cryptids are going. I'm curious to see what happens with these Canadian cases, because they are brand new in Ontario and Quebec. I'm going to stay on top of those. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thal rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, at work, in your cars, wherever you may be, including you, Bob McGuire, if you're listening. Yeah. Big thanks to everybody listening in on our chat rooms on Spreaker, LGAB, Revolution Radio, Facebook, the SOR Space Travelers Club on our website, and the Snarkers and Snarkettes on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. I know you're out there somewhere. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for kicking off the final week of February with us. Because together, my friends, we own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Have a great night, everybody. We're going to do it all again tomorrow. Crystal Skulls with Yop Van Elton. Hey, Quest, how you doing? Good to have you here in the chat room tonight. We'll talk to you all tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye-bye.